So it's very, it's a very straightforward. This is not a complex case. It just kind of gives you a sense of putting it all together here. So um, this is tooth number 15. It has an Emax crown that was placed a year ago prior to the treatment. Um, the tooth has become cold and hot sensitive um, and the patient is experiencing linger lingering pain and it's giving her headaches. So here's a preoperative. So we're looking at the not the tooth that has the root canal, but the one to the right of it there, number 15 or the upper left maxillary second molar. So access is made. This is using a, a zirconia burr. I, I like to use um, Edgendo makes a great um, zirconia burr. It's cheap and efficient, two of my favorite things. Um, but it does a really good job working through um, lithium disilicate, zirconia, just about any of the ceramics that are out there. Even the porcelains, I mean, does a, a nice job. So once the canal is um, located, we're here, we're gonna use Explorer to identify. You can see there's a lot of bleeding inside the canal space. We're gonna do an initial crown down using uh, the M4 setting. So I'm just like, I'm using an S1 um, file. I'm kind of just feeling for the pathway before I even activate. Once I, once I know that I've got my line of draw there, I can then go in. Th this is, these are relatively large canals. So I don't have to do a whole lot of, I didn't have to use any glide path preparation for this. This is mainly showing the OTR function um, in terms of sequencing here. The next mode is the um, optimum glide path. So with the optimum glide path, um, you're gonna use this to, to kind of navigate the canal system. Like I said, I'm, I'm working in reverse here. So M4 is canal shaping, M3 is glide path. A glide path is, is basically um, having patency from the canal orifice to the apical foramen. If, if you have created a glide path, then your rotary instruments will follow. I believe John West said that. Um, with the Triada ZX, um, this glide path technology is incorporated into this handpiece. So I'm um, similar to that watch winding balanced force technique. The M3 mode allows you to um, do that similar um, glide path preparation. You know, with, with a patient, I mean, the thing that I like about this is I can take and I can reposition, I can reposition, I can change this contra angle any, any direction I want. So if I'm working on a mandibular tooth, it's very easy for me to insert the handpiece using, I'm using my thumb to activate, but I, I have easy, easy access into these canals. When I, when I work on a maxillary tooth, I'm going to, I, I, like to, I like to take and rotate this so my thumb is activating it here. So now I have a, a finger rest. I can, I can go in, I can reach most of the upper right maxillary teeth utilizing the thumb activation position and the handpiece in this orientation. So with the optimum torque reverse, this is the um, memory setting four. <laughs> You know, this is, these are the pre-programmed settings. Um, the torque reverse, you know, why do we use torque control? You know, the, the main reason is to uh, minimize, you know, stresses inside the canal. So cyclic and torsional fatigue are the main reasons that cause um, instrument breakage. So if we can minimize that, um, it, it gives us a better chance of, of instrumenting the canals without trying to work, work around files. Um, if you don't use rotary files, you get that feedback with your hands by just doing whatever hand instrumenting you use, but you don't get the same um, tactile feedback with a, a hand piece that you do. So torque control is a great um, technology. Um, initial torque controls would, would just reverse when, when that torque setting would get to a, um, a certain level and, it would, and, and then it would reverse and stop. And so sometimes even with the torque control, it, it could put you at risk for file breakage. Um, it's been used, it, you know, it, it does a couple of things. It minimizes file breakage. It also increases your efficiency. Uh, we know that with really narrow canals that um, 
this can increase the uh, canal volume stresses. So it's like a very constricted narrow canal could, could create higher torsional loads and can lead to um, increased file breakage and risk. So with optimum torque reverse, um, this, this has shown to significantly improve the fatigue resistance on all instruments tested. I have to say for, for me, and I'll talk more about how I use this, but um, I see, I don't want to say no file breakage, but little to no file breakage with this, um, this tor torque reverse setting. So for those of you that are used to using rotary files, um, it's, it's a great feedback mechanism because you're going in full 360 degree rotation. And when there's stresses that are engaged, the file starts to do a reverse function and it kind of starts, I, I like to describe it as a ratcheting function. So it's like, it, it goes around and then it stops and then it backs up and then kind of, kind of does this ratcheting. So you get, you, you can continue to shape the canal without worrying about the file um, breaking. The um, M1, so the memory one setting is your apex locator mode. So with this, um, you can see there's there's two two visuals here. On the left, there's a vertical visual, and on the bottom where it says M1 in the white color, um, that's the display when you originally set this up. So that at, as you utilize the handpiece, it it goes from that M1 screen to what you see on the left, the RCM, and that's just your apex locator grid. So as the file is advanced into the canal, that little grid is going to start to show up, and when you reach the little triangle that's circled in in a rectangular green um, outline there, but just above AP, um, it's gonna, it, that's, that's, that is your endpoint. That is your minor diameter reading. 